Welcome to episode 264 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Meyer, screenwriter and blogger over at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing writer-director Matthew Brown, who just wrote and directed an indie drama called Maine. I'll be talking to him about how he got this film produced, so stay tuned for that interview. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review on iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mentioned in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast and then just look for episode number 264. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional logline and query letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I am interviewing writer-director Matthew Brown. Here is the interview. Welcome, Matthew, to the Selling You Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. So to start out, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? Um, well, I'm, I went to the North Carolina School of the Arts okay. and I graduated from there in 2015 and my junior year, um, at school, me and a lot of other people that I went to school with from the drama program and the film program got together and made my first, uh, feature film called In the Treetops. Mm-hmm. And that film sort of um, propelled me into working in the industry. It uh, premiered at the Los Angeles Film Festival in 2015. Mm -hmm. And then it played um, a couple other places and came out on VOD and I think in the summer of 2016 and then Pretty soon after that, I was already making, um, working on Maine with the producers, and and that it, it kind of all just once once uh, we started once we played in L.A., um, everything kind of snowballed from there okay. very quickly. So let's talk about that just for a quick second. Um, how did you get How did you get in yeah. the treetops? How did you get in the treetops into the L.A. Film Festival? Was it just a cold submission, or um, did you have like cold a cold submission? Sales, yeah. Okay. So yeah. And so no, no. Um, I guess that's pretty straightforward. Um, and then t- take us through that process. So you you get a little bit of heat at the LA um, LA Film Festival, um, and how did that kind of snowball for you into your latest film called Maine? Well, um, I think when I was in LA uh, for the festival, I met with well, I met with several producers, and one of them I, I'd already met with before. We had like a a class trip out to um, to LA to meet people, and I had met a producer at school that was adjunct. She was an adjunct professor, Summer Shelton. And I met her right before the school year ended, and she uh, she set up a meeting for me when I was out with the school in L.A. Uh, with these the guys at Beachside who ended up producing the movie, and um, and I think I met with them again when I was out for the L.A. Film Festival. I see. So it was really um, it was really summer who I met at school, who also is one of the producers on Maine. And she'd worked with the beachside people before on Jim Strauss's movie, People, Places, Things. And um, she set me up with them. And then from there, I I met my agent while I was out there, too, or who would would later become my agent. Um, The same 
the same trip that I was out there for the film festival. Mm-hmm. And then I went out to New York and met a, met a lot of people. And I, it just, all of a sudden people knew that I existed and wanted to, um, wanted me to sit and talk to them about the movie. Mm-hmm. So let's, um, let's dig into your, your new film, Maine. Maybe to start out, you can give us a quick pitch or a log line for that film. What is that film all about? Maine? Yeah. Well, I don't really have a quick pitch of it anymore. It's been years since I've had to pitch the movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's about two hikers on the Appalachian Trail. One is a young married woman from Spain, and she sets out to do the trail by herself. And then then she encounters a a lone American hiker, and they kind of fall into a relationship with each other and that's sort of what where we where we start things in the movie and so where did this idea come from what was sort of the genesis of this um this project well i wanted to it it started with the setting i I just wanted to make a movie that took place on the appalachian trail and all my movies sort of start with a setting usually usually And um, I'd always wanted to do the trail growing up, and I'm not able to because um, I broke my back when I was 16 in a cliff diving accident. And and then um, as I was riding it, um, as as I was riding it, I fell in love with for the first time, and then things sort of just my experiences sort of while I was writing the script populated the script. Mm -hmm. Did you grow up on the East coast near the Appalachian trail? Like how did you even come to sort of appreciate and know about that? Well, I spent time on the trail all my life. I I I grew up in North Carolina and I think I first, uh, my first trail experience, I was in the Boy Scouts and we went out to Roan Mountain in Tennessee, and I think that was the first time I was ever on the trail. And then when I was old enough to drive, I spent a lot of weekends up there, or summers in the area, just hiking around. Mm-hmm. So you have this idea, or you have this setting, basically, for, for a film. What is sort of the next step? Um, maybe ta- take us through sort of your development process. Um, do you come up with some characters? Do you come up with some story first? Um, what was the next step? After you had the setting, what were the things that you started to think about and put in place? Sorry, what was the question? Um, I'm just, you cut out for a second. Yeah, sure, no problem. I'm just, I'm just curious. So you have a setting, basically, that you want to shoot a film in. What was the next step? Did you come up with the characters um, first? Did you come up with the story? Um, maybe just go through that process a little bit, your sort of thought process going from a setting to an actual story with you know three-dimensional characters in it. Um... Well, it was my, it was just sort of whatever was going on to, in my life that I thought was interesting um, would start to fall into the script, and I guess it was the big the biggest thing that was going on with my life personally is that I was um, in love with someone that didn't love me back, and a lot of that was became part of the script, and then. Um, and then just going through my early twenties and trying to trying to lose myself and find myself at the same time, and um, that sort of struggle, and really trying to figure out, just uh, trying to answer a lot of sort of nebulous questions. So let's talk about your writing process a little bit. Um, just some quick questions. Where do you typically write when you're when you're working on your screenplays? I write at this coffee shop in Winston Salem, North Carolina, called Ardmore Coffee, at the second table <laughs> so. um, from the door uh-huh. on the far side 
of, of the table. Nice. And so, what do you, when do you yeah. when do you typically write? Um, what does your writing schedule look like? Are you someone who writes for twelve hours? Do you write in small bursts? Um, what does that look like for you? Pretty small bursts. I remember for Maine specifically, it was I would wake up, walk down from my house to the coffee shop. Um, and I'd probably stay till lunch. So I'd be there maybe from like nine in the morning till one or two. And, but I would probably only write for maybe two to three hours within all that time. Um, it kind of, it, I don't know. It has to be like, uh, something has to align cosmically for me to actually be able to write something that I like, mm-hmm. but I'll put myself it, it was more about putting myself in the situation where if um, lightning strike or inspiration that I would, I would be in the place where I could get it out. Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of times I would go there and do, I wouldn't do shit the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've all definitely as writers, we've all been there. How much time do you spend preparing to write in the outline stage versus actually in final draft writing scene descriptions and dialogue? Um, for that movie, for that movie, it was kind of straight into, uh, final draft, Hmm. but for lately I've been, I wrote a whole movie. Uh, I wrote the entire plot of a movie in sticky notes and I kind of like that better. I had a whole wall populated with these sticky notes and then, um, and then that turned into a script and I actually like that process a lot better i understand the movement of a film of the film a lot better and i can sort of see it i know that a lot of people use like um index guess, cards. Is it, no what does yeah. everybody use the everybody does cards. the same yeah. thing index the, card and, and, yeah. and that sounds like yeah it's kind of a similar process to what you're describing i like to post it mm-hmm. so how do you know let's talk about your development i really want to I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry? No, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I really, I've always wanted to have one of those, like, um, school size uh, dry erase boards. I think that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like not, not a, like, one you could fit in a, in a house, but it's like a massive one, like a, one that you would see in, in a classroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how, let's talk about your development process a little bit. How do you know when your script is ready to start showing to other people? Um, I, I sent it to two, pe- uh, two people. Um, Donald, actually the DP of Maine, he reads everything that I write first. And he will not... I know I like him to read it first because I know he wants... Uh, He'll d- destroy it if he. Um, well, he kind of always destroys it all my first drafts, and then. Um, but he also has great playable notes because I, um, which I think is really important. A lot of people give me notes, and I can't do anything with them. They're not. They're not. There's nothing that I can do. Like I don't like this part. Oh, well, okay then. Mm-hmm. Um, but and then I also send it to. Um, my friend Lisa and she has great notes too, but they're kind of the two people. It used to just be Donald, but now I have two people that are, are not at all concerned or worried about the way that I feel and will um, destroy me when need be. Yeah. And how did you meet those people? And that's really important. Yeah, no, absolutely. How did you meet those people? Were those folks that you met in school? Donald I met in school, and then Lisa I met when I was living in New York. Um, and she she's like, uh, she works at Un- Un- Unentitled or one of those management places. Okay. So once you were done with the yep. script, what was the next steps? It sounds like you had, through your first film, you had um, met an agent and gotten some contacts in the industry. But what were those steps? You have a script, uh-huh. and how did you actually turn it into a produced film? Well, by the time it was done, we actually, because they, they, Beachside took, um, 
they optioned one of the earlier drafts. So they had already optioned the script Mm -hmm. and I was still workshopping it. But now with their notes um, involved and, um, and then it had changed over time as we were casting. But as far as far as like how it went from script to um, being bought, it really wasn't, there's not much of a story there. Mm-hmm. I just like sent them a rough draft of the script. Um, and that was it. I don't think I even did like a proper lookbook or anything. And I think they were just, they they were just stoked about in the treetops and 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 that was kind of and, and I and I'm sure I guess they liked the script too mm-hmm. enough to make it and um, but that that was kind of it it was very very easy uh-huh. and I know it won't always be like that. And I know that's not like the most compelling story, but that is what happened. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's great to hear. Um, so what advice would you have for screenwriters that are looking to break into to feature films? I would have, well, there's so, so for me, like more so than asking, thinking so much about like plot and things like that, there's kind of only two questions that I ever ask myself. And one is, why is this my story to tell? And two is, why does it need to be told? Mm -hmm. And those are kind of the only two things that I think really matter. Um, So I would just have a really, really good answer to those questions Mm -hmm. before doing anything at all. And maybe, maybe you can answer those questions for Maine. (laughs) Oh... Um, so why is that my story to tell? Well, because it happened to me Okay. and because I know it mm-hmm. and, um, why does it need to be told? I think for me at the time, you know, I, I've obviously changed over the last, uh, I've, I've gotten older, but for me at the time, it was really about, uh, love and 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 what I wanted to do with the movie and I thought needed to be done was really strip this idea of ownership from love and that's what I wanted to do with the movie it changed over time but when I started writing it that's really what I wanted to do because I just saw so many relationships around me and that were um it felt like two people that wanted, uh, that didn't really love each other. They loved what they could be for each other. And that, um, so I wanted to make a movie sort of stripping that idea of ownership away from relationships and away from love and, Mm -hmm. and place a lot of respect and attention on the individual. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that journey. Perfect. So what is next for you? You've done now two feature films. What are you looking to do next? Man, three feature films. Oh, okay. Number three. Um, yeah, I'm writing this. All right, I just finished my third script, um, which is called Dickpocalypse. And um, that's what I hope to do next. Okay, perfect, perfect. And what are you putting well, in place? Actually, it's my fourth script. Okay. And what are you what are you doing to kind of get that off the ground? Are you going back to the same production company? Um, are you working working with them, talking it up with them? We I just finished it, so it's just starting to go out. I mean, I I had a great time working with Beachside. I would love to work with them again. So mm-hmm. we are obviously sending it out to them before anybody else, um, and kind of and even if they don't. Um, even if it's not for them, I'd love to have their notes. Yeah, sure. I really respect everyone that works there. Um, so, um, but yeah, it'll be it'll be uh, sending it out to them. And then I met a number of people over the last few years that seem to be excited by my work and what I'm doing. So, be sending it out to them and just hoping that someone bites. And if they don't, then already made one movie by myself, I guess I can make another one. Uh, yeah, that's the attitude, exactly. So um, how can people see Maine? Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like for it? 
Yeah, uh, so it's going to come out in limited theaters, uh, 10 cities. Or actually, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this yet. Okay. Well, this will be. This won't come out until later, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, it'll be probably over a month before this. This. Um, this podcast. Oh, okay. Okay. Us. Okay. Then we're good. Okay. Well, then it'll already be out by then. Okay. But um, it comes. It comes in uh, oh, ten screens on December thirteenth. Oh, okay. Um, and then on December fourteenth, it'll be on. VOD platforms. Okay, perfect. And what's the best way for people to keep up with what you're doing? Um, Twitter, Facebook, a blog, whatever you're comfortable sharing, I'll round up and put in the show notes. Well, I don't have a Facebook or a Twitter, but I have an Instagram that I guess you can follow if you really want to. Okay. Um, oh, should I say my thing? Yeah, sure. My handle or whatever? Exactly. So it's it's M C Chicken Ister. So Mick Chicken Ister. Okay. Perfect, perfect. And yeah, it's um that's that's um I'll as I said, I'll round that up for the show notes and just put it so people can click over to it. Um well well um, Matthew, I really appreciate your coming on the show with me today and, and telling your story. Um I wish you all the luck with this film. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you. We'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, bye. A quick plug for the SYS Screenwriting Analysis Service. It's a really economical way to get a high quality professional evaluation on your screenplay. When you buy our three pack, you get evaluations at just $67 per script for feature films and just $55 for teleplays. All the readers have professional experience reading for studios, production companies, contests, and agencies. You can read a short bio on each reader on our website, and you can pick the reader who you think is the best fit for your script. Turnaround time is usually just a few days, but rarely more than a week. The readers will evaluate your script on six key factors, concept, character, structure, marketability, tone, and overall craft, which includes formatting, spelling, and grammar. Every script will get a grade of pass, consider, or recommend, which should help you roughly understand where your script might rank if you were to submit it to a production company or agency. We can provide an analysis on features or television scripts. We also do proofreading without any analysis. We will also look at a treatment or outline and give you the same analysis on it. So if you're looking to vet some of your project ideas, this is a great way to do it. We will also write your logline and synopsis for you. You can add this logline and synopsis writing service to an analysis, or you can simply purchase this service as a standalone product. As a bonus, if your screenplay gets a recommend or a consider from one of our readers, you get to list the screenplay in the SYS Select database, which is a database for producers to find screenplays and a big part of our SYS Select program. Producers are in the database searching for material on a daily basis, so it's another great way to get your material in front of them. As a further bonus, if your script gets a recommend from one of our readers, your screenplay will get included in our monthly best of newsletter. Each month we send out a newsletter that highlights the best screenplays that have come through our script analysis service. This is monthly newsletter that goes out to our list of over 400 producers who are actively looking for material. So again, this is another great way to get your material out there. So if you want a professional evaluation, of your screenplay at a very reasonable price, check out www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. Again, that's sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. That's the show. Thank you for listening.